voice, he's so tired of it. There's no got so many songs for man, but whatever. The Monday time for breaks it to like what? 145 right now? It's fine that just after mid So going a fair amount of time. Is it going to be one of those like dark houses? Is it going to be like an Edgar Allan Poe type thing, man? Where it's um, like just from what I see here, yeah, that's totally the Raven saying Nevermore. That's totally that thing, right? So, still, ah, distinctly, I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate a dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. In these plague days, we are hiding, trapped in our chambers, gliding. Overseas of death, so scared of landing at this fest of gore. It feels very Ed Edgar Allan Poe to me, like you know, in terms of the way it's written, purposefully, obviously. Like that's why it's that's why maybe it was chosen that way. But still, man. So let's try to break this down. So it was in the darkest points of December, right? Um, and then each dying ember from like a fire or whatever was going out on the floor. Um, in these plague days, um, they were hiding, trapped in their houses, and then gliding over the seas of death landing. Yeah, I'm guessing in time, in the times of the plague, quite literally. So, they were having to go th past so many dead bodies, so much gore, in order to go back around, and they were stuck, man. They were quarantined in those times. They were stuck within that time where they were sold, just like, they weren't allowed to leave because either they'd spread the disease, or this disease would get them, or whichever way, man. Like, the Black Death was nothing to laugh about. It was, it took so many people with it. There I thought of the unspoken, of the lives that had been broken. When I heard that something stroking hardly, cracking windows glass. I saw, I saw a raven. The child of thunder, the mystic bird, the darkest wonder. As the skies were torn asunder, I was hoping doom would pass. So as he saw the raven, a raven is a sign, it's a, it's a reference, it's an omen, should we say. Two certain things. What things? I don't remember from the life of me, man. It's been so long since I've even thought about it. But generally, from what I remember, ravens are a dark sign. Like, they're generally like, before something dark happens. Maybe that's a myth. Maybe that's something else. But we'll see. So they're hoping that now that the skies were torn, torn asunder and the, the mystic birds were going away, that doom would eventually pass, that everything would begin to get better that everything will start to exist once again in a sense maybe potentially interesting i need way more of the song to understand it so oh yeah i thought the play was driven by ratson rather than raven for weather interesting The orchestration's gorgeous, mate. That's beautiful.
boy, man. That song is so, so, so technical and so deep. There are so many layers to it, man. It's like, it's listening to a whole symphony right there, man. Damn. Still. Harbinger, a plague with wings of purest ebony. So obviously a blackbird. Uh, with, with black uh, with black eyes haunting his soul. I asked the raven, can I take back days of your croaked raven? Nevermore. Like, you get the idea, right? It's very much an Edgar Allan Poe thing too, don't, don't get me wrong, but still. The gaze of the bird was piercing, a chilling down the spine, its blaming was thrilling. Inside me, it woke up feeling that I'm guilty in their deaths. Maybe, he's, maybe he helped spread the deaths, or... That maybe he was the cause of the death, should we say. Maybe he was the plague that was happening. Or the plague... I was thinking of the Black Death. Maybe he is the Black Death or something to that degree. You know what I mean? Like something that powerful. Something just ripping apart like shreds of humanity in that sense. Closing the doors of my dark chamber. Letting nobody to enter. Letting the Reaper dismember bodies. Taking the final breath. And yeah, interesting. Okay then. It's like, yeah, he's like, he's finally feeling guilt and taking blame in the fact of his own actions, in a sense, and interesting, so the raven is almost like coming to him and saying that, can we now pass this, can we now move past this darkness, can we move on to something else, can I finally be away from this gore, from this death, from this destruction, and yeah. <laughs> It's like the solitude is getting to me even more, you know what I mean, like, you know what I can tell. Oh, I love the vocals, man. The background vocals, they're gorgeous, man. So yeah, I think I got it. I think I do, man. I think. Let me just quickly reread this, right? So December, um, the fires were burning to keep people warm, man. Yeah. So in these play days, so like I think it's literally like in those times, man. In those ancient times, or ancient, should I? It's not really ancient, but like when the plague was a thing, right? And then um, everybody trapped in their chambers, and then like the death everywhere. Then, the skies were torn asunder, so I thought Doom would pass. But then the raven came down, so Doom would, does not pass. Harbour just played with the pure seven. Yeah, that's the raven. Like, then he sp starts speaking to the raven, like, sending a chill down his spine. He woke up a feeling that he's guilty of their deaths because he caused them. Then, as he closed the, closes the door to the chamber with the bird left in it. And then, like, allowing the reaper, the the, the raven, like a raven eats dead bodies, right? That's a literal thing it does, so. Allowing it to dismember the bodies for, bodies for food. Harbinger a plague with wings of purest ebony. And the black applies haunted souls. And then, 
we get into this bit. Which makes the whole song come together, for me anyway. The raven, art thou judged, judged undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly I implore. Shall I see this dawn this morning, or the angels will be mourning for my soul in hellfire burning, quoth the raven, nevermore. Like, the the raven's always going to be saying nevermore, no regardless, like saying yes, it will nevermore happen. And then, so, this desert land of snow and rain and a death and destruction, I, on this haunted home, like, will he be, will he finally get to see dawn? Will he finally get to die? Will everything start to be, will everything start to mourn for his soul within the hellfire? Will I finally get to not exist in this world e again? Harbinger of a plague with wings of purest ebony. Um, tell if I survive, I implore, never more, oh, never more, he'll never tell him if he's going to survive, if he's going to go another day. He's trapped in perpetual hell. Basically, he's using the raven as a way to communicate, right? As the, uh, one, as the one thing that can see him, but can never tell him, can never speak to him, can never explain to him, can never do any of these things. It's like a, um, it's like a projection onto the creature rather than a literal creature saying it, if that makes sense. It's like a total projection of his thoughts, of his feelings, of everything else, of that doom, that, uh, that enchanted doom that the raven brings is a, it's a sign. It's not a sign that's true, but... In terms of this, it's a very massive metaphor around it. And there's probably so much more you could really go on about this, but my voice is extremely tired. And I got the gist of it, I think, man. I'm probably missing some things out of it, but yeah. Obviously, like Edgar Allan Poe-ish, or esque, should I say. And you get the idea, man. He's like projecting his entire thought procedure onto the raven itself, allowing the raven to feast on the dead bodies that he caused, and... Yeah. Never more.